Hi, Kylie here. Today I want to help you answer the question, what are the best matte gloss and gel mediums to use as an adhesive for collage, mixed media and art journaling? And why does it matter? In this video, you'll gain the knowledge you need to choose the right medium for the type of art you practice. And we will compare the brands for best results. I'll show you samples side by side. And if you stick around to the end, I'll list all 10 products in order of my preference based on their performance. I'll firstly say though, if I only had to pick one essential product for mixed media, this is it. I can't create what I do without it and it's my most used art supply. So that's why I like to make sure I have the right one. It really does make a difference to the work. So let's start with why matte or gel medium matters. I've just brought across my art journal here to show you the way that I use matte gel as my surface to work on as my underlayer. This is actually a Dina Wakely Media Journal and I absolutely love it. And this is just a background, very, very first layer. I haven't even put any paint on there or anything yet, but just collage down some papers. Who knows how much of this will be seen at the end, but it just gives me something to start with. So really now I'm going to be working on top of this. I really want this to feel exactly like I'm just working on paper and for my pencils and everything to work well on top of this. And likewise, if I'm not working in my journal, I'd be doing the same either on a canvas or a wood board. So this is my wood board. You can see this is a birch board. And, and incidentally, they do say that it's the best possible way to seal the wood is to use gloss gel on the underside of the papers. And then I collage my papers on top of there and that's where I'll put my painting on top of that. So those are the reasons that they really are priming the surface for me and they will affect the way every other layer goes down. If you're already really happy with the way all of the elements on your journal page or substrate are kind of melting together so to speak to become one, if you don't have any issues with wrinkling or buckling or bulkiness or pages sticking together and you're happy with the final finish of your work, you have likely already found the right product for you. The thing is though that when you understand why that is, you're less likely to ruin an element you loved because you lay down a new layer and it surprises you in the way it behaves. I think that's the hardest thing about mixed media in a way is that you have something already down that you love and it's a little bit nerve-wracking to put the next layer on in case it ruins what you've already done. Often it's things like bleeding or smearing or the bottom layer bleeds through into the layer that you've just done. Things go a bit muddy or don't get the consistency you're looking for. So all of that comes down often to understanding how the products interact and the quality of the surface. To give you an example of this in action for me, I'll show you an art journal page that I'm halfway through and I'm hoping the camera will pick this up okay but essentially you can see that I've collaged a lot of different papers on the on the background there then I've smeared some paint and a bit of ink and so on over the top of that and now I'm trying to start drawing in the detail and for many of the products that are on our list today they wouldn't actually work well with this pencil that would be going over the top here. The reason that matters is that they may work well with something like let's say an Intense or a Stabilo All or one of those more robust products that, that draws on pretty much anything. If you don't like something and you want to rub it out then that's not going to come off or anything like that. So here this allows me to sketch in what I want to sketch. I can still I can still erase if I want to and then also the products on top are going to behave the way they should because I've used the right surface. So it does make a difference to the look of your final art. Before we dive into the products I'll just let you know real quick what these mediums actually are because once you understand them you're more likely to pick the one that's going to give the best result like we said. Just kind of seems strange doesn't it that you could really choose any one of these products in front of me and there's many more as well that would actually do the job of collaging for you in your art journal or on your wood panel or canvas and yet they're actually not all the same thing. So gel medium is essentially acrylic paint without colour pigment added. So just like acrylic paint it comes in a variety of consistencies. You get your fluid or your soft or your thick. It comes in different sheens, matte or gloss or satin and matte medium without the word gel in the name is simply a more fluid version of the matte gel medium. That's this one here. So 
matte medium, it doesn't have the word gel in the name and it's simply more fluid and that's thicker. Essentially all of these matte mediums can be used to glue, dissolve water soluble media. So for example, if you're using an intense pencil, if you instead of using water use this, then it's it's not going to it's going to become semi-permanent. Uh, you can use it as a ground to prepare your surface, like we mentioned with the wood boards. And you can mix it in with your acrylic paint colours to make your paint more transparent or to make it thinner or thicker. So let's assume then that we've chosen to work with artist grade acrylic mediums rather than a glue. Then we need to be mindful of our own personal preferences. And the first thing with that is, do we prefer matte or gloss? I'm going to demonstrate mixing some of these so that you can have a look for yourself. Glazing is when you mix your acrylic paint with your gels and mediums and, and make them more transparent, which is kind of what I'm doing here. However, we're not talking about glazing. The reason that I'm doing it this way is because it's hard for you really in the camera to see the medium without the color in there just because it's so clear. So in this video, as we're talking mostly about collage and art journaling, for this purpose, I have a strong preference for matte and I'll let you know why. As you saw before, I love the vintage papers and book pages for the things to look a bit weathered and worn on my finished project. The matte gel and the matte medium leaves it looking rough and natural, just as if there's nothing on the surface there. However, if you want your collage papers to look super glossy and bright and lustrous, you could use the gloss, and certainly a lot of artists do. The important factor to remember though is that it's easier to draw over the top of matte. Gloss does sort of leave a plasticky kind of film. I mean, it, it's transparent and it doesn't, if it's a good quality, it doesn't take away from the quality of, of the product, but the subsequent layers won't go down as well on, on gloss as I'll show you. And another thing to think about is gloss will make your pages more likely to stick together if you're art journaling. An awesome thing to remember is that if you choose gloss and later on decide you want matte or vice versa, you can correct the sheen that you've used by varnishing your work. If you've used gloss in your work and decide it's not photographing well because the gloss is giving it a sheen and you want to photograph your art, then you can just varnish it with matte and that will bring it back uh, and vice versa. So I guess to summarise, these reasons are why I lean toward matte most of the time and you'll probably see that a little bit more when I show the samples later. The next is to choose between soft and heavy mediums. The fluid or soft mediums are best for lightweight papers such as tissue, deli and rice paper and it alleviates the wrinkling that can occur when you're applying those delicate collage layers. It's also good when you only want a really light coat over the top, but it can get bubbles just on the surface, so you simply avoid this by not shaking the bottle prior to using it. Your gel mediums are best for your heavier papers like book pages, regular papers and cardstock and also your fabrics or those kind of heavy burlaps or different elements that you want to add into your collage. Because there's more substance to the medium when it's gel, I've found that it seems to give me less problems with bubbles under the surface of my collage. I don't know if you've had that happen to you, but you know when after it's dry you suddenly notice a little bit of an air bubble because you didn't use enough product? That seems to happen happen less for me when I'm using the gel just because there's so much more substance to it it seems to give a stronger adhesion. Taking all of this as our guide for the type of medium we might choose let's have a look at how the individual brands and products perform. Of course this is just my personal experience and art is all about exploration and there's so many variables in methods and materials and conditions so you may have different preferences from me. Something else to consider is whether you should choose an artist or a craft grade product. I have another video specifically comparing the economy of all of these products and how to make it more achievable to afford the artist grade brands, so you may like to check that out. But just quickly, a lot of people also use an actual glue for these purposes like Mod Podge, especially for collaging and art journaling. And so if you've seen that, you might wonder, how is matte medium different than Mod Podge? Well, Mod Podge is the perfect glue for decoupage. And when I say that, I'm talking about decoupaging onto hard surfaces where you're not going to be working on top. So as you can see, I have nothing against Mod Podge because I have several different types of it here. <laughs> so I do use it myself, but it's just not what I would use for the purposes we've been talking about in mixed media and art journaling today. So for example, this is just a little Christmas bauble that I made for my friend and it was a plastic bauble and I've decoupaged tissue paper on top of it and I've Mod Podged through all of the layers to firstly adhere the tissue and then secondly to actually seal it. And that's what's so great about Mod Podge is it 
is an excellent sealer which matte mediums and gel mediums are not. And I don't know if the camera will pick this up or not, but if, if you can see the glitter that's on the surface there, that's because for this one I used the Mod Podge that has the glitter in it. And the great thing about Mod Podge is it comes with all sorts of different finishes depending on what you're working with. So it works beautifully, but if I was now to go in on top of this and try to add inks and paints and things, I would be having a little bit more difficulty. One way that I can show you what I'm talking about a little bit more easily is here I've laid down a craft, well I, I'm considering it a craft grade product just because that's where you buy it from, a craft grade medium and also the price point and the quality I've experienced using it along with the top of the range from my perspective which is golden in a matte and artist grade gloss. So I've just taken these three because they, they give a couple of different examples. And if you have a look down here, the golden matte, can you see how there's literally, the page looks like there's nothing there. The Atelier gloss is doing what it should. It's giving a glossy surface and you can still see the paper underneath perfectly. Whereas the Porter Craft, which is more of a craft grade product, is leaving a bit of a film on the surface. It's almost got a, a white, residue these have been allowed to dry so you can imagine if you've used that on your artwork on top of your paper you're going to have this milky kind of film so that's why I'm not so keen on it as the layer above the paper so going through the products one by one I've made all these little samples so we can compare like for like the factors I've mentioned earlier are the guide for the type of medium you might choose for the type of art you do and I've road tested these for what I do. So these are ranked in order of preference, one to 10, based on the fact that I want to use wet art supplies on top of my collage papers. That, that is the, the thing that makes the difference. In buying these products, if cost and availability is not a factor, then I would choose golden as my number one. However, I do have another video in which I've talked about economy and how to get the best value artist grade products for us similar price to the craft grade products. So if you want to know more of, from an economical point of view, check out my other video. So top performance for me was the golden regular gel matte, which is this one here. And the reason is that you can just see that I've been able to get a huge number of different products down on here without any of them rubbing off or wiping away or not sort of adhering to the tooth of the product. And also it gave no halo around the edge. So all around this, this was the best performer for me, although it was probably pretty hard to differentiate between that and the Liquitex Matte Gel. So the Liquitex Matte Gel, really, you've been able to get a lot of dimension in this. There's plenty of layers going on. All of the products worked really well. So they were very, very similar in the way that they worked. The Liquitex Matte Medium, again, gives a lovely result. Beautiful to work on. However, I probably just found... I do find it has a slight bit more halo than the other two, as you can see there. Not that that's a huge deal, but that's just something to know. But for me, I, I don't use this one as often because I use heavier papers. The next was the Atelier Heavy Gel Gloss. That's this one here. You can see that it's given a real glossy, shiny finish. And actually, although that makes it harder to work on, it does make things pop, so it does have some advantages, although you can definitely see the product. The other ones I'd almost describe as completely, practically naked from the product, whereas this really you can see it on the surface. But it's a nice finish, it's a glossy finish, so if you like that, that'll be great. If you want to go for your gloss, I would prefer the Atelier for this purpose, simply because the Liquitex one, it's still perfectly fine as a finish. It's just I couldn't get hardly any products to stick on top of it. So that's why that came in below the Atelier one. The Dina Wake ultra thick gel medium. I'm not sure if you can tell there, there are a few Posca pens and things that have stuck on there, the paint. It is slightly sort of bleeding a little bit, but I couldn't really get any of these lovely watery effects that I got around the edges with the other ones with the inks and so on. And that's this ultra thick medium here. But it, the thing is, it's, it's got a really, really nice finish as a collage surface. Like it's, it's, it just feels nice and it doesn't have a halo or a thick plasticky film. So that came in next. The Distress Collage Medium. At first I thought I really liked the surface when I was working with it, but as time went on and it dried, it, it has left a much more gluey residue than I realised that it was at first. But yeah, it, it has taken 
the inks a little bit but as you can see here it, it's not, not giving them a lovely surface to work from. We've already talked about the Portacraft heavy gel medium it's the one that I showed you earlier that had the milky kind of residue on this paper here and you can see it coming around the edges of the product there and it, it didn't take a lot of product which is why this collage doesn't have a lot of complexity to it. The Mod Podge I used the matte for this sample. The papers have not gone down very well they're kind of wrinkly and bluey and the pencil's gone on it okay but the other products such as the paint and the inks haven't stayed so and it's very it's sort of rough and it's just not got a very pleasing finish to it. And lastly the Dina Wakely Soft Gel Medium. This you can see hasn't taken hardly any product on top of it at all. So it's probably lovely for putting down your light weight papers because it is so incredibly gentle to put down. You're not going to be scraping off your soft tissues and so on when you're putting them down. But what you do on top of that is not going to stick on there very well unless you're using perhaps just straight acrylic paint and that's all. So I just wanted to show you before I closed off the samples that you saw me working on earlier, just because once they're dry they do look a little bit different. These are the matte mediums here and as you can see, because when I was doing it in the sample it was still wet and so it looked more shiny than it actually is, as you can see how matte that is dried. And also you'll notice, look how see that looked quite thick and, and heavy to lay down that's become that's very fluid but also you can see the marks I've drawn underneath really clearly particularly in the cobalt teal because here it's very opaque and that's brought it back to a really almost water color -y kind of um, depth of, of color so that you can see what's underneath. So that's the matte medium. The matte gel which is the heavier one, this one here. Again this one has brought the shine down because I was using both Golden and Windsor and Newton products and they do tend to have a bit of a shine and a sheen to them. So these have, have given it a matte finish but also you'll see how much more transparent that is and because this is more thick it's also holding the brush stroke more and then lastly the gloss now that it's dried you can see this was the paint originally and now that the gloss has been added you can just see how much more glossy that is it also probably doesn't make it it does make it more transparent than the original but not as transparent as the other mediums however now if I wanted to go and draw on this that's going to be a lot more difficult whereas this is going to be lovely to work on now if you would like to watch me making these samples from start to finish we can see me doing the collage and then adding all of the different layers and using all of the different art supplies. Check out the next video where I filled my process. It was lots of fun and there you can find out more about why these choices were made. I purchased all of these products myself so if this was helpful to you I'd love it if you could hit like and subscribe and check out my other videos if you want to know more about getting the best value when purchasing your mixed media art supplies.